Numerous scientists were instrumental in the discovery of chromosomal inheritance or the presence of genes in, or DNA inside of chromosomes and that these particles were then those particles that actually carry the inheritance that he referred to as factors. Uh, some of these scientists include um, Darwin himself who theorized the presence of something called gamules uh, as the carriers of genetic information or particles which were in the blood and entered the germ cells or the gametes uh, and were transferred from one generation to the next. Another scientist that was instrumental also was a, a Swiss science called Meischer who actually discovered the presence of nucleine, what, what he called uh, the, the materials contained within the nucleus of cells and that this material was somehow related to uh, inheritance. Uh, you also have people working in the germ theory like Koch, which were instrumental in the ability to isolate and visualize um, cells to, to a very close to the actual, the actual microscope and being able to stain them and see different parts of it. And then you also have, using the, all those techniques, uh, Walter Fleming, which actually was the first one to discover mitosis. He did that in the 1870s, even as Mendel was still working on his factor theory and studying the inheritance patterns that he eventually discovered and coined. But it wasn't until the 1900s that Mendel's work was rediscovered and connected with what, with what was already discovered to be to exist as the chromosomes. Uh, later in his life, Walter Fleming also discovered the presence of chromosomes during the process of mitosis. And he then, then he realized that these chromosomes must be important for the cell because there was a whole process to actually preserve their structure and number and making basically copying them and making sure that it were distributed equally across the daughter cells. So these scientists all worked together and little by little discoveries were incremental to make lead to the process of discovery of the chromosome. And the chromosome was established by the end of the 1880s, 1890s. People already have this clear idea of the existence of a chromosome. But it wasn't until the early 1900s with a scientist called Thomas Hunt Morgan, that the chromosomes were actually identified as the particle of inheritance which carried genetic information as Mandel described in his studies. And he also looked at patterns of this inheritance and discovered several aspects of inheritance as displayed by chromosomes. So Thomas Hunt Morgan worked with flies. He worked with uh, White-eyed mutant flies versus red-eyed mutant flies. And we called his, he called his flies the Drosophila flies. And we still use them in biology classes today to actually mock what he has done. And in AP Biology, we actually do experiments with these flies to try to understand the inheritance patterns that Mendel studied. And flies have a life cycle that's very interesting. In about two weeks, they will complete one complete life cycle. And they will go from the egg to the pulpa to an adult and back to the embryo and, and we complete the cycle. And they have a very interesting metamorphosis that they go through. But this whole process will be very quick from the copulation to the actual completion of one generation. So, and it's a very, something that also has very straight up features. For example, you see in the board uh, on the screen the difference between a white eyed and red eyed fruit fly. And there's also other differences like the color of the body, the shape of the body, the shape of the wings. Very distinctive features which are carried in chromosomes, which Thomas Hunt Morgan could study to kind of figure out what was happening. The same way that it was kind of easy to use um, the peas. So Mendel used peas, Thomas Hunt Morgan used flies. By the way, Thomas Hunt Morgan also looked at peas to try to explain the chromosomes that Mendel was actually looking at in his P studies. And we'll talk about that when we talk about linked genes on the next video. Now, one of the first things that were actually, that were actually coined by Thomas Hunt Morgan was the idea of a wild type versus a mutant type. Now, Darwin had already discussed the idea of mutations or changes in the DNA, DNA or all. Well, actually, he didn't assign it to the DNA, but he meant changes to the actual composition of animals or organic structures or morphology of the animals across time 
And this is actually the idea that came before Darwin himself, Lamarck, actually invented the, the term evolution, which was the, basically the idea that animals would change over time because of environmental pressures. But Morgan was the first one to actually co coin the term wild type versus mutant type. And the idea basically is that there are several types of features for the same kind of thing within the same species. So there's variation within the same species in the same way that Darwin had described and Lamarck had described and many other scientists by then had already described. So all of these naturalists have already noticed these changes. And Thomas Hunt Morgan was the first one to, to think that two different versions, basically, of the same gene, the same way Mendel described, were responsible for these changes. And so he coined a term to explain Mendel's homozygous heterozygous looks, he was, the, he was the one that coined the term alleles, or different versions of the same gene. And he told, called one of these alleles the original, or the wild type, and the variation of the original was called the mutant type. So that word that we use, mutant, it comes from Thomas Hans Morgan's work. And you can see some examples of that here. You see here, right here a mutant albino, an albino um, penguin. Uh, being fed, you also see albinos and other colorations of squirrels up there on the right side. You see the mutations of the human blood types over here. And then you also see panther with his different coloration patterns. And the actual black is a variation of the original wild type in which the whole body gets pigmented. So that's something that's actually a variation of the theme. All right, on our next video, we're going to be talking about what Hunter Morgan actually discovered about the nature of chromosomes and how his discoveries accelerated the process of understanding of genetic inheritance through chromosomes. See you guys then.